Okay, so we're down to the last major step in this process. And essentially what we're trying to do here is to calculate environmental distances or distances in, in environmental space to any well-known site across our country. So essentially, if this is our half-degree sampling grid or aggregation grid, and these bold outlined squares are the squares that are known well in terms of our inventory, then for every site, like maybe for this site right there, we want to know how different or similar it is to every site that's within one of these squares, because those are our well-known squares. So how do we do this? Well, we're going to plot a bunch of random points. And there are 5,000 random points scattered across our country. So I went ahead and did this using this tool, the random points tool. Um, and I did it in advance because it takes 5 or 10 minutes to produce that number of points. But literally all I did was to take the outline boundary layer, I, and then I specified 5,000 points, and then I gave a name and a path to the shape file, and I selected add result to canvas. So very easy. I end up with this set of points. Now, what I want you to notice, let's zoom in just to be able to look at this. Here's our aggregation grid. Here's a well-known square. And you notice we have a bunch of points that fall within that square. Well, in our GDIST coverage, that all of those points will have a GDIST of zero because they are inside of a well-known uh, area of our map. So we're going to use that trick to our advantage. And then we're going to characterize environments just in two dimensions, annual mean temperature and annual mean precipitation. And the last little bit that you need to know is that in order for the point sampling tool to give you all of the options, you need to have all of the coverages that you care about turned on. So we go to the point sampling tool. There is our sampling point coverage, the shapefile with the random points. And then we can pick out the fields that we want to get data from. So for example, we definitely want the identifier for the random point coverage. And then down here at the end, we want temperature, precipitation, and we want our geographic distance coverage. Why do we want the geographic distance coverage? That's so we'll know which points and which environments are well characterized, well known in our inventory. And then all we do is to name our output file, and we hit OK. I'm not going to do it because I've pre-cooked this one as well, uh, because again, this is something that can take five or ten minutes. So you run that routine, and you get this shape file out. It's exactly the same random points, but if you look at its attributes table, it has the ID number of the points, temperature, precipitation, and geographic distance. And then once again, if we look at these points that are inside the zero category of geographic distance, I just want you to notice that they're all going to be inside of well-known squares. There, we just got out. Okay, so notice that it's about 660. Notice Or actually, we want to select all. 
and then we go to this and copy selected rows to our clipboard. We go over to Excel and paste. And that's where we'll stop this recording and I'll give you the Excel portion.